And we are back, the Cyborg Nation station, for episode three. My, my co-host, Amy Kaplan, uh, was just in Singapore for one championship. She is currently in the lovely island of Phuket with yes. Phuket Top Team. Um, but I have an amazing guest today to fill her spot, um, the channel's own Chris Cyborg. <sighs> <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Thank you, baby. You know, we know Thailand's special place. I hope she's enjoy. For yeah. us, it's very special. And thank you for Cyber Nation. I'm really be happy to be here, Cyber Nation Station, and talk a little bit about the Mimi Award and about me. Thank you. So as you guys know, we've been continuing to try to bring a little bit more content to the channel. Um, we have Eddie Productions here today. Thanks to his wife for helping us with the productions for today's episode. And we're going to be working on more content, including Chris Cyborg. Um, let's get straight into things. And Amy went to go check out Cosmo Alexandre, uh, good boy, um, in one championship. I know we were eating sushi when it came on TV. Did you see the, did you see the, the damage that was done after the knockout by Cosmo? You know, I'm a big fan of Cosmo, not just inside the octagon, but outside I think he's a very good person because it made his name good boy. And, but you know, he's very dangerous in octagon. He's a very good Muay Thai fighter. Yeah, that was one of the things. Before, on episode two, we kind of gave predictions for the fight. And I told Amy, man, this is a very dangerous fight for a free agent who just signed with a brand new promotion yes. to fight a guy that has 100 Muay Thai fights at the highest level. Um, a seven and one record going into the fight. Um, wow. It was 30 seconds. And then I think he actually had a eight fractures and like a nine hour surgery. Yes. Yeah, probably. Um, I, I, I saw the video picture too. It looked very bad. <laughs> Reminded me when cyber fought that guy and he broke his front head. What, uh, when you saw those of you guys that don't know her ex husband, um, suffered a f head fracture, I think, much more significant than Sage Northcutt's. Um, is he fighting anymore? Is he is he still training? Well, any update at all on, on, on the ex-husband? You know, he's training, but he can, I think he's teach. You know, he can, he not allow for fighting. But the last time I hear about, he's having a lot of, a lot of head, head, head hurts. Like, how's it say in English? Head Head, head trauma, yes, brain head. injuries, headaches. Yeah, headaches. He's have a lot of headaches, and he no fight again after that. But he's teaching. But I hear about he's have a lot of headaches. Yeah, that's that's the scary thing about combat sports, right? But you know, we really don't know it's from this damage because if we take a punch, it's the whole his career, he's had a lot of fights, maybe 36, 35 and a fighters, and you can, you know, this can be consequence of all fighters, you know, because MMA is very new. Uh, you're going to see about the old people who started in MMA. How's it going to be when you get old? Yeah, it's crazy because in other sports, you're just now starting to see this. You're starting to see in the NFL, these players are suing the NFL about brain concussions. And, and a lot of the coaches were lying to the players about when their brain was injured. In the UFC, when you get knocked out, what happens to you after you get knocked out? No, after the commission come, can check you and then they give you one paper, you have to be 45 days, don't do anything, no training, no, no, no move too much, stay home, rest. And do you do, I mean, let's say, let's say I, I'm running and I pull my hamstring. Okay, obviously I know I'm not going to go right back into running and training right away, but I'm not going to just sit on the couch for 45 days, right? Because my, my hamstring's not going to start healing i got to do massage i got to do stretch i'm gonna start with lightweight training is there any type of training or or like a protocol that like ufc fighters go through or are they just sitting on the couch for 45 days you no know, usually i think all the fighters sit in the couch and they wait for 45 days and come back to the cave training but you know my, after my last fight i don't have any concussion for the last the last fight but i had concussion in my career but nobody teach me you can do physiotherapy you can go to the doctor, doctor is going to give you exercise. The period you're going to be home 45 days, you're going to do exercise, they're going to check you every week, and it's getting better everything because you can, you're going to not have damage if you continue to do physiotherapy for your brain, get a recovery. You say exercise, like, what am I going to do? 
push-ups with my brain? I mean, how do I exercise um, my brain? You know, have a lot of lo lot of different exercise depending on what damage you have. Like uh, you, you go doctor, he's gonna check in you. Sometimes the left side is no good. How right do they? Side. How do they check you? What uh, are they doing? Then put one glass on you, and like uh, usually we move our eyes. Your brain moves the eyes when you see something inside the glass. The the the, the glasses. It's not something you control. And that when they do the test, then see what's the, the problem. But you can fix everything, you know. You can fix it and continue work, you know, if you're getting sooner. But the problem is the fighters don't do that. So what they're doing is they're measuring the movements of your eye. Yes. They're seeing how long it takes to move from one point to another point. Yes. And then they're looking at that information and they're determining what side of your brain is injured. Yes, they do that. And then the exercises, those are like to help you get a new pathway or a new, a new, a new way of going that direction? Depending on what's their injury, but usually, okay, then put, then put some points in the wall. You can look fast and they switch you when you look. Uh, you, then have it sometimes they put you in the chair and they turn you in the chair. And therefore, you can feel that feeling when this, they think a speed is spin. Uh, like a uh, motion sickness yes. when yeah. you're driving in the mountains in the car. Yes, have a lot of things that work. And every time you go over there, every week, he's give it to you different training, but it's like for a brain training, you know. It's not because you're going to run. No, it's going to be something inside the room, easy and simple. You're going to take your time, 15 minutes. That's nice. And we have an exciting fight, boxing, airing against Raquel. Where did you go? I went there. To uh, Hawaiian Gardens Casino. Yes. Tell me about it. It was, it was it was a great fight. I mean, Aaron Tillio was uh, fighting for another world title. Yes, you know one thing is special. I I fought. I trained with both. You know, I did the sparring together with both, and and I love. I was supporting with boxing, women's boxing, and Raquel was undefeated, and then the Aaron about Aaron. She's the first world MMA world champion before me. You know, it says uh, she's legend. People say she's a legend, but she's a legend too. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that Aaron Tohill is is really not just an MMA fighter that boxed. Yes, she is a two sport athlete, right? She did her first MMA fight in 1999. She did her first boxing fight in in 2000. Yes. Um, and she's fought everybody. 2005, she fought for a world title against. She fought Layla Ali too. Against yes. Layla Ali. Um, and Raquel Miller, you know, she's 34 years old. Aaron's a little bit older at 41. She took some time off. She kind of made some changes in her own life before making a return back. Um, Raquel got the finish in the seventh round, right? Um, tough fight. Tough fight. Well, what are your thoughts on the fight? Uh, you know, I did sparring for both. And then Raquel, was, I feel when we sparring together, she's very, really fast, really fast. Aaron, she's fast, but she's p her punch is very powerful, you know, the, the difference between then when it's part then. And Danger Fighter, too. Yeah, well, it was a great fight. It'll be really interesting to see. Um, I know people on Cyborg Nation all know who Clarissa Shields is. Clarissa Shields and Raquel Miller, they got a little bit of bad blood going on between the two of them. With the win, Raquel Miller picks up a, a, a smaller title for the World Championship. It'll be interesting to see if those two – Get into the ring. Yes, they're going to be very excited. And what about you? You know, I have a dream to do a boxing fight. A uh, long time in the beginning of my career, and I started boxing first. And after I go shoot the box, we did Muay Thai. But I have a dream to do a boxing fight. Maybe I can have, have the opportunity soon. You know, I think Cyber Nation is going to be with me. And why not? You know, I think it's nice to get a challenge. Would you want to box here in the United States, in Brazil? You know, anywhere, anywhere I have the opportunity, you know, I think, um, of course, I need a little time for train because it's very different than MMA, but I think I can adjust it very well because I love uh, boxing and the strike. I'm, you know, my personality in the cage and let's see. One of the things that we were talking about with Amy um, on a previous episode was we were talking about women's boxing and men's boxing. Women only do two minute rounds. Um, men obviously do three minute rounds. Um, what's your thought on women doing two minute rounds because it's supposed to be safer for women than it is for men? Uh, what's your thoughts? You know, in punching the in punching the head is damage for the women's and in men's is the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's not safe for either one of you. Yes, it's not because ah the men's and to have a 
hearts gold and the woman no i think it's the same but uh, i think uh, the difference is the three men's round and two men's round because two men's it is don't have uh, any you can only study your opponent yeah you know? it's pretty fast right pretty, yeah, pretty two fast. minutes is 120 two, seconds yes and then it has to be really fast and then i think when the three men's i thought i was five minutes but three minutes you maybe can study a little bit more so I think if we have a last punch in the head, then it'll be two minutes. Now, when you fought, or you said for there to be less punch in the head, make it two minutes? Is that what you said? Three minutes. Three, Three minutes. minutes are going to be last punch because people, you can study a little bit your opponent. So what you're minutes, saying is, is if it was a three-minute round, maybe there's less punches being thrown because you're, you're actually studying. Yeah, you your can study your look opponent because the two minutes don't have a time. You know, it's a short time for you to do the stuff. Yeah. For you, you need to win that, f that round. Two Open. minutes is a shotgun shootout in a yes. telephone booth. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, so my question uh, about this is when you first started fighting MMA, did the women fight a different time than the men? I think you used to fight three-minute rounds. Yes, I think change it when the champion five minutes, huh? Or no. No, I think that, that was actually a change three minutes, in I the think. sport of mixed martial arts. Yeah, um, I, I did three minutes. Three they minutes. used to do three-minute rounds for women, and then that eventually changed for women to do the same amount of time in their fights that the men do. And I think I agree with you that that's a change that boxing needs to do, that the women and the men should be competing under the same time limits. And then I think when you have more time, I think it's more excited for who's watching the fight. Because you can see the opponent and study. It's not just one front each other and the punch throw punch. I think it's three minutes are going to be more longer is better. Plus, one of the complaints about women's boxing is a lot of people say, ah, when I watch Clarissa Shields against Christina Hammer, it went the whole fight, and I don't want to watch it go to a decision. But I think that, well, I know that Christina Hammer made it out of at least three of those rounds because there wasn't yes. another minute yes you know so i i they saved the kong saver yeah the the the, the bell that did save her yes so exciting news and it's interesting to see that you were there for aaron and uh raquel's fight and i look forward to seeing you in the box hearing myself yes i finally got a chance to see this video you've been advertising on youtube um from uganda man what a powerful video that was you know, Uganda for me, we never uh, no make plans. You know, it's l l really is God plan because I didn't make any plan being Uganda, and the vi this video is very special. Usually, when I do missionary work or charity work, I don't like to share my video because it shows why you're doing something. But you know what? the The problem is this. Okay, y you don't want to share that you're doing something, but. I get on Facebook and everybody else has no problem sharing something when it's, it's a street fight or it's somebody getting robbed at gunpoint or so I, I, myself, I think it's super awesome that you and the team are creating content that has a positive message because there's so much negative stuff already on social media and there's so much garbage already being shown through the cell phone that it is nice to see you bring light to a little bit of a message. I mean, I, I know it's a 30 minute video, but it's content that hopefully will inspire people do to maybe do their own thing. Yes, you know, in the beginning, I was beginning my career, I always say, okay, be the world champion is very big responsibility. How do people call you the world champion don't do anything for change of the world? Um, this I felt in my heart a long time. And because as I usually do all, all this thing for helping, do something cool, and you know, not just be the champ champion, but be the champion in the life, these people. Yeah. Because, okay, now I'm not champion anymore. No people say, ah, because you're not champion anymore. No I say, no, no, before I'm champion, I'm 13 years in the field, in champ in champion, long time. I always do like this work for helping people. But the most important thing, be the champion, you be the champion in people's life. Because now I'm not holding the belt. But I know I'm in, in a lot of hearts. You know, I change a lot of lives. And this is the most important. Be a fighter or not be a fighter. People are going to remember me when I retire, when I'm the champion. And this video, Uganda, is just example. You know, I went there. It's a very hard time for me there. What, what made it so hard for you? You know, the first thing, because when you move to Uganda, of course, I'm from Brazil. I saw a lot of things. 
but I never see things like in Uganda. What do you mean things? Explain to me. Uh, like people, man, they don't have simple things. Like wake up in the morning, don't have water to drink. You see kids, no shoes. Kids use to wear the clothes. I don't know how long that clothes. Right. Like dirty. Please vote for Richard Nixon. I know. <laughs> and then th th and then dirty clothes and then have some clothes. And then you can see all the American clothes. And then one thing I saw, okay, the, I don't know, it's sure, but the clothes people donation here, you can see their sell there. Like I see these things there. Yeah, a lot of corruption in Africa. And uh, I see a lot of clothes. You see the clothes that people from anywhere in the world give, but you see that is no giveaway. It's uh, like they're selling the places. And I don't know how it's work there, but one thing touched really my heart uh, inside the car. And I see one kid, she's going to school. She have the uniform and have a lot of kids around her. And she have just one, one pair of shoes and one socks. <laughs> like... See how the special is put in one, uh, like uh, she don't have another shoes, but since you put the socks away if in one shoe. Yeah. And that thing uh, killed my heart. I look at that thing as, and then she's happy. You look at them, then smile for me, then say bye for me when I pass the car. And when I was there, I say, man, then when I, when I stop in the village and I see all the peoples and I won't cry. I was inside the car. I don't want to get out of the car because I was crying. See then. Right. But then, and then, but then happened them smile for me, and I say, you know, I cannot show sadness because they don't ha they don't know, they don't know another life. Come in my heart, Chris, they don't know another life. Her grandfather, her grandmother came in the same situation. They don't know another life. Right. But uh, we know another life. We know. Right. You don't know what uh, steak and potato dinner is because you've never had steak and potato. Right. I know, I know. You just miss something you have. If you never have, you're not gonna miss. Right. And and then when I did, okay, I started dance the music the for with, with then, you know, like I I s then happy. I try make them more happy. And we play together, we talk together, and we celebrate. I put the two water wells there, and I very feel very special because just the rain, we, you're gonna be there. And he said, Chris, you can come with me. And the nice when you help some community, you don't just send the money, but you can see what they're doing. This is the more special thing. And drink, yeah. I drink the water there too. I think you guys are watching YouTube. You guys are gonna have fun. We dance, we celebrate, and you're gonna see. Sometimes one thing I'm learn, you know, I always try to be better human being every day, but you know, it's a battle fight, spirit of battle in your brain all the time. Amen. And and when uh, one after my loss. I went to there to stay, see the people there, and you see how special because you cannot complain. You wake up in the morning, you have water. You wake up in the morning, you can brush your teeth, you can clean water, you can drink, you can eat whatever you want, you can go on Amazon, order anything for being your door next day or on the same day, depending. And then people over there wake up in the morning, have to hunting. Sometimes you have to see if you have one banana, one green banana to eat, and drink one water, dirty water. You don't know if you're going to drink, you're going to die the next day. And for them, it's normal. For them, this thing is normal. Yeah, it was a little bit unique, too, for you, right? Because the the people that you gave the water well to, they were actually the Botwa Aborigines. And if I understand the story correctly, they lived in the jungle in the Congo and migrated without knowing it, crossing international borders. Um, and then were essentially captured in Uganda and put into kind of like makeshift refugee camps. Yes. Did you get a chance to see one of those camps? Yes, I went to the camp. Then the houses, they make with dirt. It's like dirt and... Mud and sticks. Mud and sticks. And, and they don't have anything you guys think inside what the house. What about a toilet? They don't, have, they don't have toilet. It's a one hole. What about a shower? No shower. They don't have a shower, they don't have anything. But the, the place they went to have the water well, and then they take the water there, probably in the shower, they wash their clothes there. But ha before having one water, if you see the documentary, you're gonna see having the water, before they take the water from the river. But they moved to there in 2007, and then drinking that water is no problem. But in 2015, these people start dying drinking that water. What, how, how come they started to die from the water? Because the, the river passed, passed through to the city. They don't live in the city, they live in the jungle. And they just think you go to the, the place they went. And they, they, they throw stuff in the, in the river and they make the water no, no clean to, to drink. 
So people polluted the water yes. in the city with their trash. Yes. And then people in the villages would drink the water. Yes. And they literally were dying of diarrhea. And, then, and it's so sad because the king told me, it's like then before, like 400 people, 300 people, then stayed that place. And now just 160. Half, yeah, half, half of the people that the came people. there have died? Then died the HIV, then died because drink the bad water, the disease. And then the funny, the funny, no, the saddest, and they didn't think it's a bad spirit. Uh, bad spirit bring the kid bad spirit take the spirit you know and you know it's no bad spirit this is like disease like um, you know and don't have it they don't if you hurt there you don't have a hostile to go yeah i saw i i saw in the video that you guys were talking about uh the mosquito the mosquito uh disease what's the, what, what is that called malaria malaria and malaria. everybody here in the united states you can you could still get mal malaria from mosquitoes and stagnant water, but you just go to the doctor and you get yes, cheap because, pills. Yes, because uh, usually the people who die with diarrhea. You know, it, it nobody dies with diarrhea in this world anymore. But because they don't have anything for teaching them and keep it, they die with diarrhea. And when I was there, I take the pills every day. Like we, uh, I went to the doctor, we take the pills every day for malaria. And then after you get out of Uganda, you take, continue to take seven days. Uh, I take a lot of shots before I go over there in the um, United States. And when in South Africa, I take another ones because I don't have it here. And the people just need the help and the people compassion, compassion for help then because it's, it's little things. But they didn't have very healthy then. They smile for you, then happy, and just need the opportunity. Well, I think it's really amazing the work that you and Justin and Rand and other athletes have been able to do. I think that the, the cause... Uh, for the fight for the forgotten is an amazing thing. One of the things that I love about what Justin Wren and what you guys are doing there is you're not just giving them stuff. You, Justin has a water, a land, and a food initiative. So I actually, I saw some pictures where the king is now using the water that you were able to bring him and they're farming and they're actually taking those vegetables now from the farm. And for the first time ever, they have a stream of income because they're able to bring those surplus of vegetables to the market and essentially become farmers and have their own little business. So yes, I have some. After I saw the people in the back to hotel, uh, I was getting very, very frustrated with everything. And then I opened my heart to just Justin. Let's go buy a lot of things. Let's buy clothes. Let's buy food. Let's buy everything. Forgive to them. And say, Chris, we don't want to give away. We want to teach them. We want to teach them farm because they're not going to change it. People sometimes do that. Go over there, do water well. But they don't teach. Have more than 400, I think 400,000, I don't know how many water wells broke. And they never use again because it no, it's not just go over there to put the water well. You need to teach them, fix the water well. You know, Empower teach them. Empower them. Yes, teach them, save a little 10 cents every month. For if you went to broke that thing, you can have a little bit of money for save. Like the little things. Yeah. And then he's explained for him. But for me, the beginner is hard because it, it, when you see somebody suffering, you need to give away everything, something. But uh, you're not going to change their lives. It's just going to make them wait for another time somebody give away. You know, it's, it's no good. And then he said, Chris, I'm going to teach them farm. They're going to have your own fruits, own vegetables. And then the after they can sell, they can buy your own clothes. And if you just give away, you're not going to help them. Right. You need to teach them, educate them, you know, for they have the opportunity for, for them to do for own them, for, for them something good. Well, fantastic. Those of you guys that are wanting to get involved with the Fight for the Forgotten, um, you can click the link in the bottom of the description. Um, Justin Wren is trying to raise money for their ongoing initiative, and uh, we look forward to getting involved, having all of Team Cyborg involved with that. Nice. And, man, is the heavyweight division back in boxing, especially with American Deontay Wilder. Did you happen to catch this fight with Dominique Brazil at all this weekend? You know, I just watched the clip, the fight, but I know it's a very quick fight. Man, and the lead-up to the fight, I have never in my life seen a guy so seriously get into the eyes of another man and tell him, I'm going to kill you. 
Deontay Wilder in the lead up to this fight. I'm not really sure what the bad blood was between the two of them, but he gave several interviews where he said, this is the only sport in the world where I can legally kill you and I'm going to use my right to kill you and I'm going to do it in the ring. And when Dominique fell down so early in the fight with such a brutal knockout, I held my breath and thought, dear God, please let this guy move. And he did. But now my question to you, Miss Mike Tyson of women's MMA, do you think wishing death on your opponent is crossing the line in the sport? I think heavy. It's really heavy to say that. Hardcore. Hardcore. You have to have uh, like balls. <laughs> you know, if you do something, this happens. This is another guy. You know, bec I never use this for me when I fight. I never say I'm going to kill anybody uh, because it's very heavy word. Well, if you've never seen the boxing interview of uh, Chris Eubank Sr., um, he actually put another boxer in a wheelchair. And they met many years later um, in a very historic meeting. And I, I could just tell you this. If you actually took somebody's life, especially at an event where probably his wife, his mother, his children are there watching, supporting him for the athletic competition, I got to think that's going to be something heavy that sits with you. But, you know, but sometimes people, because it's uh, the wor what you say, is it's powerful. You know, you have to care about your said. Because imagine if it's happened this. You're going to be have to hold this your whole life. You know, and it's, it's a heavy. You just, okay, I understand you say for self review. I understand I don't know what the beef then had between then. But I think for cute, cute people, like you think <laughs> about this, I think it's still heavy, you know. but Well, with the knockout, uh, Deontay went to 41-0 with one draw to Tyson Fury, and 40 of those 41 wins were by way of knockout. Um, everybody in the United States is wanting to see this Anthony Joshua fight. Anthony Joshua fought Dominique Brazil as well, um, but went all the way till the seventh round. So now my question is, can you look at a fight like Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua, and can you say, ah, they both fought this guy, Dominique Brazil, and Deontay won in the first round, and Anthony Joshua won in the seventh round, so Anthony Joshua is going to win this fight. You know, it's different fighters, different styles. I think he like, okay, maybe maybe he didn't can see a little bit this way, but sometimes, or you're not gonna, if you're going to be your day too, but I think it's life, it's the fighter style to fight. Right, styles make fights. Yes, yes, I think it's this. I think... And then I think he's play a lot of his brain too, you know, like saying he's gonna kill him. I think, it, <laughs> you know, I think it, I don't know. Mike Tyson effect. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay, you had the next news. And then Hashad Evans are gonna be the Hall of Fame as well. The Brazilian. The Bra No, no. Hashad. Hashad Evans. Oh, you mean Rashad Evans, <laughs> the American? I want to make sure my my fan my fans in Brazil can understand me. I w to be honest, we <laughs> do get a fair amount of complaints that we don't have enough stuff in Portuguese on the channel. I know. Hey guys, hey galera, in breve, in breve a gente vai a gente tá fazendo um grupo aos pouquinhos vai ter em português. Hey, um, well Rashad Evans, man, 19 and 8 overall, big wins over Rampage Jackson, Chuck Liddell, Forrest Griffin, Michael Bisbing, Stephen Bonner. I think that he's certainly earned his way into that Hall of Fame. Yes, I would like to know how you can be in the 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 wall fame like, how you can be in the wall in like the wall. what what the well you got to be retired first of all but you're saying what the credentials yeah, are yeah you have you have to retire first yeah you can't still be you can't still be fighting a, and be on the wall of fame okay this is the only rules you know that's the only one i know of oh uh, cool because you know something why jens pover not not in the wall uh, you know what I, I i'm going to say i agree 100% jens pover needs to get on that that wall hall of fame uh man he did so much for the sport you know he had a big win over your ruka training partner nice. um Gen bj Penn. bj Penn. he won the the first lightweight title went and beat cub swanson caluno dennis hallman i mean jens pulver not only was a legend in the ufc but then went and boxed on espn four nose and up boxer i think that uh 100 he's done more than enough in the ufc and in combat sports to get us 
place in the UFC Hall of Fame. Hmm. What about you? You think we'll see you in the UFC Hall of Fame one day? You and I speak real? Like real, <laughs> in the bottom of my heart. Uh, yeah. I don't know, do I? You know, about all the history, <laughs> my history, my career at UFC, I don't think so. I think I'm never going to be there well. Wow. But, you know, uh, I prefer being the wall, the hearts, my fans' hearts. And I have one wall in my gym. You guys can check it out. But, oh. you know, it's... I mean, I, I, I certainly think you deserve to be in any Hall of Fame that has women fighters in it. You're, I mean... Even with the UFC, you're five and one. But like I said, you have to be retired to get into the UFC Hall of Fame. So yeah. I guess as long as they don't have you in the Hall of Fame, you're still active. You know, it's not the point. This don't no, it's not the point you deserve. Because if you think about the deserve, a lot of things you think, a lot of people deserve it. It's about the fair, you know. And there's a lot of things not fair. Yeah. And then you just have to watch. And then, and S speaking about watching. <laughs> You watched the UFC this weekend, or more specifically, did you see Megan Anderson's fight against Felicia Spencer? You know, I saw I saw little clips, and but you know, I really I was in the boxing fight. Yeah. But you know, I I hear about Spencer's sub submission. You know, Megan. She did. And pretty easily, I might add. Yes. And I was thinking it was gonna be a different fight a little bit, but you know. I think it'll be an amazing fight, and I just hear people text me, Cyber Nation, they just, just call me out after the fight. Yeah, after the fight, you put up a tweet saying that you had had one fight in 15 months, and that you accept her challenge for July 27th in Russia, or... No, in Canada. Canada. For sure, I, I would accept the challenge, you know, I went back to the cage a long time ago, I, I asked for a fight in Brazil at my 11, and for sure, I would like to fight her, I would accept it, and... I, I hope to have a fight in Canada, and this is going to be my last fight at UFC. I'm going to be free agent. What do you mean? Do you have you have one remaining fight on your contract? Yes. And then after that, you're a free agent? Yes. Wow. Well, Felice Spencer, I mean, I think she, she has a win over Macy Chasen, who won the, the Ultimate Fighter at 145. Um, she's undefeated. She just beat Megan Anderson, who was the Invicta champion. Yes. Um, so this is kind of like the linear Invicta championship and, and a matchup between you and her, considering you vacated your Invicta championship, um, just kind of seems like the next logical fight um, that would be made from a matchup. So I'm excited to see it. I hope you cool. train hard. Yes. And I'm looking forward to seeing this fight go down July 27th in... Canada. Yes, me too. I'm very excited. Guys, Cyber Nation, you like to follow me around, take pictures for me. I'm going to be this weekend in Las Vegas, Memorial Day. Memorial, Memorial Day weekend. weekend. And they're going to be start cast uh, Saturday 10 to 12. And they're going to be to double or nothing pro wrestling nighttime. I'm going to be enjoying pro wrestling girls. Yeah, this StarCast, man, we were talking about it last week. I am so excited for this. This is going to be like UFC Fan Expo 2007, back when it was cool, right? There's a ton of celebrities showing up. You've got MMA fighters. You've got wrestlers. You've got public entertainers. Um, there's going to be meet and greets. There's a roast with Ric Flair going on. And I'm going to bring my Cyber Nation belt. Oh, that's right. Fans, yes. if you have not seen the Cyborg Nation fan belt, make sure you look for her in Vegas. Get your photo with it. Hashtag Cyborg Nation. Um, the Double or Nothing pay-per-view is going to be an exciting one because it's featuring Kenny Omega versus Chris Jericho, two of the biggest names in wrestling outside of the WWE right now. And probably even bigger than that, we have the two brothers, Cody versus Dustin Rhodes featuring in a super fight against each other. Um, with you going to AEW, you've been tweeting a lot about WWE. You know, we've seen Becky Lynch call you out online. Um, is there a chance that maybe we, we can see you inside of the, the, the three-roped wrestling ring? You know, it's going to be nice, and I've been training, you know, it's a different was at work, but I know I've been training, I would like this opportunity, I think you're going to have fun, I think Cyber Nation are going to enjoy. 
Um, but what's going to happen the first time somebody slaps you across your chest? I have to breathe. I had to remember my yoga classes. <laughs> then you have to go after. Then I had to go after, yes. Nice. Yeah. Well, fans, I'm sure are excited for this Memorial Day weekend to see you in Las Vegas with StarCast Saturday in the afternoon, early morning, and then that evening with Double or Nothing. Yes, for sure. And don't forget, you in Las Vegas can go eat Protein House, too. Nice. It's amazing. Larissa food. Hayes, right? Larissa Hayes and Healthy Food, for sure, are going to be around there. If you cannot have the opportunity to see me at uh, uh, Startcast or Pro Wrestling, you can go check it out there. Sometimes I go over there to my mails. Yeah, fantastic. And those of you guys that are unable to make it to Las Vegas, please make sure you follow the YouTube channel. Thanks to Eddie Productions, we will be putting together a highlight video of the weekend to give you an exclusive all access look at Chris Cyborg's weekend in Vegas. Yeah. So you are getting set to head to Africa for your training camp for this July 27th fight against Felicia Spencer. Um, a lot of people were wondering if they were going to see you in Vegas for International Fight Week. Does that mean you're not going to watch Nunez versus Home Live? No, I probably am going to watch it being, when I'm in South Africa. I'm living in South Africa. I'm already training for my next fight. And they're going to do my camp, my end in my camp over there. And, but I'm going to watch it TV for sure. So uh, I think a lot of people are wanting to know, you, you spent 13 years undefeated. You lost the last fight, but it was, it was quick. A lot of fans feel like they didn't even get a real chance to see who was the better athlete because it was so fast. Um, are you disappointed that you didn't get the immediate rematch? Did you ask for a re an immediate rematch? You no, know, after the fight, uh, I'm very sober. I talked to everybody, did all the interviews, and I asked Dano I the rematch. And after when he did the, the post conference, and he said he's not going to give the rematch. And I want to take out my heart, you know, but I asked him for and. And this is already happened with me before because my first fight in MMA I lost and as the rematch I never get it. Uh, this is not gonna change uh, my 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 whole career. I'm gonna continue to work hard, but for sure I ask for the rematch. Um, are are you disappointed to see that she's gonna fight Holly Holm next instead of making that rematch? And do you feel like Holly Holm was the next in line for that fight, or do you think? Maybe Catlin Vieira or Jermaine Durandamy or some of those other options at Bantamweight might have been a better selection if Nunez was going to defend the belt at 135. You know, the reality, when I signed the deal for Fire Amanda, I asked for them to put the rematch there. Oh, you mean to tell me you asked for the rematch before you fought Amanda? Yes, before and then with Holly Holm too. You know, ah, I said, so it wasn't just Amanda that you asked for the no, rematch. No, no, I asked you for them put the clause in my contract. If something happened, or lost, I have the opportunity to rematch because I know how hard you make somebody go, then can go back to 135, fight 135, and never get a rematch. What do you mean they can go back to 135? When you sign a contract, you you put the weight like so. No, like you. Okay, she signed it. You fight me 145. We fight for my belt. And when I fight Holly Holm, I ask for them put the put the rematch if something happened I lost because I cannot go 135 fight right and then if you don't, you don't sign the deal to have more fights 145 then cannot make the fight uh, so you wanted them to put a if you lost that whoever beat you there was a mandatory clause that their next fight would be at 145 giving you an opportunity at, at, a, at, a, at a pathway for a rematch yes I did this with a hot home I did this with uh, other fighters you know because um, Amanda Nunes I did because this then cannot do the rematch because for now because Amanda no want to fight now and then then cannot force her because she don't have more fights 145 and you know the life continue you know so I want a prediction I mean you went five rounds with Hall at home and you fought Amanda Nunes um, what is your prediction for this fight you know Holly Holm she's a tough fighter and she's very 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 experienced and I think she's gonna move a lot of a fight among the noons. I supposed to do, you know, but I don't did what I'm supposed to do. I, I we did a whole plan, but you know, I go for it. Amanda just danger the first round, really, and she's really fast too. And but I think gonna be different fight, and it'll be tough fight, and we're gonna be we're gonna be good fight, gonna be a good fight.
Are we going to get a prediction or no? Um, I think if he passed the first round, I think you're going to probably, I think you're probably going to beat her. Uh, maybe if you're not, because I think Holly going to be in shape and fast, I fought her. I know. I know she's trained hard and and she's always in shape, he trained hard and they think she's very strong mind. Like she you know she she you know she move around. She had a lot of a lot of boxing fights. I think she's not gonna use it emotionally, like emotion things. Like I, I think did. emotion got to you. Yeah, emotion got me, and then I think with her, I'm not gonna get it. And and I think I think I I think this. I think I'm under the danger at the beginning. Um, okay, the people say oh, okay, but I'm under black belt can take down Holly Holm. And I think Holly Holm trained three years already wrestling with a good coach. Privates, right? Privates. Yeah. And I think you can see that in Meg Anderson fight. When she get a click from Meg Anderson, she start to work her wrestling. And, and dominate it, Megan it Anderson yes, in the wrestling. Yes, dominate the wrestling. And I think this is can be can happen, you know. I think if she's not going to be the stand-up. And I don't think uh, uh, Amanda just go forward for points. She do not go back. And then with Holly, have to move both. Uh, let's see. Let's see. It's going to be an exciting fight, you know. So do you want the winner? I mean, do you want to fight? Do you want to give Holly Holm the rematch if she wins? Uh, do you want the rematch with Nunez if she wins? Um, what, do you want the winner of this fight? What, what's up with you? You know, my next fight, if it happens, is going to be July 27th. And it's going to be my last fight in contract. And after, I'm going to be free. So you're gonna let your manager negotiate that? I'm gonna let my manager negotiate that, and his his job, his job deal with this, deal with UFC. Nice. You know what I'm ups very upset about? You very upset? I don't know. Tell me why you're very upset about this you time. You know, it's it's not very upset. It's like worry about. I mean, talk to you now, but I know my pig is free at the house now, <laughs> and then he's a lot eat the grass, and he's eating all my grass over there. Yeah, and I don't I don't know if everybody knows this. You have an actual pig that you brought to our house. Yes, I we put his name in Manny Porkyal. Explain to them though how you introduced Manny Porkyal to me. Okay, first I told Ray, Ray, you know, baby, baby. I always know when the word baby comes out, I always know I'm in trouble. No, but before, so before we leave you in a small apartment, we had to talk about the, the pig. You remember? No. Of course not. <laughs> and then I say about the baby, the, the pig, and then I told him, oh, baby, I think you have a pig. It's so crazy. Did you have two cats, one dog, one fish, one lizard. You cannot have a pig. I said, okay. And then we move. We move. And I talked to Ray, you know, Ray, I would, baby, I would like to have one pig. Baby, <laughs> I'd like to have one pig. And what did I say? Chris, you're not going to get a pig now because you go to straight to Africa in one week. And then I have to take care of God. I have to get everybody and the pig. And you're going to be in Africa for a month. You're not going for a day. You're not going for two days. No, y you're going for a month. I don't know anything about a pig. And I say maybe too late because Tuesday you're gonna go to the airport pick up many. <laughs> <laughs> and the worst part about this, right, is everybody asks me the first question they ask me as soon as they find out that my novia got me a pig. They say, "How big is your pig gonna get?" And I say, "Well, it's supposed to be a mini pig." And then T mini pig. Oh yeah, a teacup mini yeah, pig. Yes, yes. So then I text message you, "Hey baby." Can you send me the name of the pig breeder? Hi, I don't know. I don't know. I Google. Because when I think about I'm going to have a pig, I go Google and say, how I can buy a mean pig. So she sends me the name and the contact of the pig breeder. And I go on Yelp and like the first four reviews on Yelp are people with 300 pound pigs pissed off that they got sent this hog that's now two years and 300 pounds. So hopefully hopefully men are going to stay around 50 pounds. Hopefully we have a teacup mini pig. His, if if his, not I'll make sure to edit the description and put the mini cup breeder in the description. <laughs> hey, yeah. Yes. For real. For real, but I know I think he's gonna be okay. He stays in street diet, and he's you know he's healthy now. And yeah, we, we she's got an entire track set up. Ah, she yeah, put that run dog to day. run. He's she's teaching him day. tricks. Yes, sit down. He's 
run. He's gonna be good. He's be good. So I want to thank you guys for yet another episode of the Cyborg Nation Station. If you enjoyed it, if you enjoyed having Chris stop by the episode today, please click like, subscribe, hit the notification next to the bell so you get an instant update when we put a video. And we will see you soon. You smash the butt. <laughs> <laughs>